All right. So um, I think many of you in the room are familiar with the SPDX tool. So I'll probably go through this relatively quickly because I'd, I'd like to make sure we have some good time at the end for some discussion on what the future tools are. Quite honestly, that's where I'm going to get some benefit from all of you is to get some feedback on what we should be working for next. So I want to make sure we have time to do that. But if I start to go too fast and you want some more detail, uh, just tell me to slow down you know, or pause and answer questions, whatever. Um, so um, I used to call these the SPDX tools, but that's a little confusing because you saw a bunch of SPDX tools. And they're not from SPDX. They're, they're from a lot of different contributors. So they're now called the SPDX workgroup tools in case you need the translation. Um, so SPDX worker tools are really SPDX tools that are built and maintained by the SPDX technical group. Um, most of it's mine, but there's quite a few contributions from other code writers, and, and everything in here is essentially contributed to by the entire technical group. I don't think there's a single line of code that wasn't influenced by some discussion within the SPDX technical you know, working group, so it really is a collaborative uh, work that's available to everybody in open source under Apache 2.0. Whether you like Apache or not, that's, that's uh, the one we decided on. Um, what did the SPDX tools do? Well, uh, you know, they, what they, they really are, most of them really are intended for the consumption of SPDX, which is a little bit different than some of the other uh, tools that are out there um, that are a little bit more uh, targeted towards the uh, production. Uh, but it's for reading and analyzing the SPDX documents. Now, where, where these tools actually came from, and I mentioned this at the beginning, but it, but it may give you a little bit of context of where these have come from. We really support two different formats. We support the tag value format, which the Linux community just loves. Uh, and then it supports the RDF format, which a lot of the Java community just loves, right? And, and so this kind of brings those two different worlds together, the, the tag value format and the good, for, I mean, I'm sorry, the, uh, the RDF format. Guy. So uh, we couldn't agree on the format, so we decided to write some tools that translate between RDF and tag values. That, that really was the genesis of the tools. But they've evolved quite a bit since then. So there's viewers that will basically take an SPDX file and just dump it out to a text file for easy reading. It's very simple, command line. Uh, we've extended that to uh, be an HTML format. And if any of you are HTML programmers and would love to create a very nice looking HTML file, there is a template file that I would welcome anybody to contribute to because I'm the one who wrote the template. And I'll guarantee you it's not very good HTML. It's not very elegant HTML. Somebody could write a much better one, contribute that back, and we'd have a really nice HTML viewer for the, uh, for the SPDX file. That encourage contributions on, on that front. I'll, I'll put that on the list. <laughs> I'll put it on the list. Oh, there we go. And uh, while I'm at it, I'll, I'll make one more plea for uh, contributions, which is the tag. I, I mentioned I'm an RDF guy in terms of where I'm coming from. Nobody's maintaining the tag uh, part of the translators. Um, when we go to SPDX 2.0, um, there's a really interesting, I, I think it's a really interesting computer science problem of being able to write a new parser that can interpret something with a hierarchy. Right now it's very flat. Every tag is unique. It's very simple. I got this tag. That's where it goes in the SPDX file. Now you're going to have in 2.0, I've got a document. This document may have other documents. You've got a document. This document has a package. The package may have other packages. It may be a distribution, right? And so how do you create this hierarchy, and how do you represent that in a language? So any of you that are into, you know, LALR parsers or, you know, uh, or compiler guys, or if there's like a uh, university that has a compiler course that has some students that would like to uh, contribute something interesting, be part of a new language, uh, we have an opportunity to contribute to the SPDX community. So I'll put that up here too. That's the uh, tag uh, uh, tool. Right now I'm doing it, and again, I'm not sure I'm the, the best person to do it, but uh, it's there. Um, so in, in addition to translating between tag and RDF, we also uh, translate between spreadsheets. Uh, this is particularly useful for those of you in the legal community that don't read RDF or tag value, but like to work inside a spreadsheet. So basically, it goes both ways. So you can take an, uh, 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 something that Matt and the, the UNO tools produce in the SPDX, and you can import it into a spreadsheet and you can easily read it. What's neat is you can go in and you can make modifications. 
and you can translate it back into a tag value or an RDF file format that can then be interpreted by the tools and be uploaded to the diff tools again that you just saw earlier. So that's a very, very useful uh, translation. What's new is we did some command line comparison. Originally I did a, a comparison of two different uh, files, um, but based on uh, a lot of, the, the, basically the Bake Off that's coming up tomorrow, uh, with a, a lot of help from Phil and, and uh, Kirsten and I have actually been collaborating on this for, for quite a while in terms of the comparison documents. This afternoon's Bake Off, right after lunch, here, here. That's right. Come back and then you'll see a demo of the, of the uh, comparison tool in addition to a lot of different uh, tag value formats that will kind of be compared. So now it'll actually produce this very, very uh, nice looking uh, uh, spreadsheet that'll compare multiple documents. So when we do the, the bake off, all these different, you know, uh, uh, tag value formats that are produced by all these different tools, we can just load it all up on one spreadsheet and then we can go through different tabs and it'll show you color coded. Thanks Phil for the suggestion. Color coded, you know, what are all the differences in there. So uh, that's, and all these tools are available, uploaded in open source. Um, talked about this. And then this one here, uh, it, does anybody in here uh, Java programmer by chance? How many of you are programmers, software writers? Okay, good. How many of you are Java programmers? Okay, that's close enough. You, 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 oh yeah, Android Java. If you, if you write Android apps, then you, you, you'll, even, even if you're not a Java programmer, I'd encourage you to look at the, uh, the actual source code as a model for implementing things in any other language the model is fairly complete, any object-oriented language will recognize the structure and be able to leverage at least some of the concepts from the open source code. So in addition to the actual tools, there's the library that implements the tools. And I'm just going to, since there isn't that many Java programmers in the room, I won't spend much time at all, but I'll give you a few teasers on what's out there and what's available. Um, the, it, like I mentioned, there's a lot of different contributors to this. I just wanted to call out a few people. Uh, Protocode, uh, Raina was the previous uh, author of the tag value. Uh, I solely miss Raina. She was uh, very, very helpful for the organization. Peter Williams at OpenLogic did a lot of the uh, RDFA support. Kirsten, um, in addition to collaborating on, uh, on the uh, uh, comparison tool, she's been doing a lot of the documentation and the requirements analysis for it. Uh, Kate's done the tag value design and the ever popular spreadsheet format. Um, and then uh, the technical and business working groups, like I mentioned before, uh, done a lot of the, uh, lot of the uh, uh, requirements and, and you know, vetting out the different implementation options. And of course, uh, I've done some of the implementation. So I'm going to, so this is just a little bit more detail. Um, I'll tell you, all these slides say almost the same thing. Command line driven, um, nothing elegant. It'd be nice if it was on the web. Be nice if it was like the uh, the UNO tools where you just go to a website and do it. But you can download these. You do a Java dash jar. You give it the name of the application and the name of the file, and it runs and it produces what it produces. It also all of these tools actually do a validation. So there's been some talk in the technical and business teams that boy we need a validation tool. Quite honestly, those discussions always frustrate me because if you've got one, just run these tools. It actually does a fairly deep validation of the file. It goes through everything that we've discussed in the technical team as things that need to be validated. So for example, um, organization, according to the spec, needs to have person colon, organization colon, or tool colon. If it doesn't have one of those, it's not a valid SPDX document, according to the spec. So I actually go down into the fields, parse that out, and I'll report back. I may not fail the tool. It depends on the severity of the, the, the verification error. But I'll actually produce a list of warnings that say this SPDX document is not valid because you know, this, this, or this. It goes all the way down to the files and licenses and everything. So, so that's another feature that's uh, present in these tools. This is just a view of the uh, spreadsheet translator. This is the, uh, the comparison. And I'd encourage you to stick around for the bake up so you can see the, the, the spreadsheet output of that. This gives you a view of the, the uh, two way comparison. Is just a text document. The one thing I'll say about that is it does go through a fairly detailed analysis. So it's, it's, it's extremely nitpicky at the differences. Uh, what it fails at is the summary analysis. It doesn't give you a very good feel for how similar or dissimilar they are. Um, but it will tell you even if the most minutest detail is different. It actually implements a license comparator 
that will take uh, two different licenses. So he uses the uh, proposed uh, license matching guidelines of SPDX to see if the P text is the same. So in the comparison, you know, you may have license ref 23 here, license ref 70 here, and it includes a text in there. We'll do a uh, uh, tokenized comparison that you know does the British. I'm sure I'm not supposed to say British. Am I the American English to non-American English translation? And I'll tell you if those two licenses are close enough to be called the same according to the SPDX guidelines. And uh, and then it'll tell you these two are the same. For the same license. Yeah, yeah, so it takes care of that. Yep. So this is an interesting one. Now, I, I think in, in practice, and when I think about it, if it's made by the same tool, um, it's probably going to show up as being the same license because the license references are never the same because they're usually generated by the tool that, that collects them. Yeah. You know, so if it's the same tool, it's probably going to tell you the same, but because these things are extracted and the tools have different uh, uh, mechanisms for extracting those licenses, I'd be surprised if we ever have the same license show up as being equal. You know, because one's going to grab more lines than the other, and, you know, uh, one's going to include the. Uh, like uh, in, in the, the tool that, that, uh, that Source Auditor has, we parse out the comments. So you won't see, you know, the slash slash or the slash star because we have a comment parser that just, you know, gets rid of all that. A lot of other tools, like we saw that the Ninka tools, right, actually Ninka does that as well, but Pathology doesn't. I, I think Pathology leaves the, the uh, comments in there. So those aren't going to match because the comment characters were there. So in practice, it may not be that useful, but it, it's, it, was, it was some interesting programming. Um, tag value translator, not much to say here other than contributor to maintain the, uh, the tag side of it. And uh, this is my, uh, my short, uh, I don't want to scare you with this, I'm not going to go into detail on the, uh, on the model, but, but this is the object model that's implemented in Java that supports the, uh, um, the SPDX standard. So um, this is the same model that you'll find in the spec, only represented as a more of a formal UML class diagram. So you'll find Java code behind each one of those, and you can go in and you can look at the implementation. All of them have a common method called verify. So you can go in and look and see how we actually verify each of these different uh, uh, classes to see, you know, uh, if if you know if if. Uh, your tool is forming it the same way and using the same rules that the SPDX tools are. Um, the other thing I'll just mention as far as these, these Java library tools, they are used in commercial applications. Uh, I know of three of them that use at least some of it. Um, Source Auditor, a Black Duck, I believe, uses that, some of the SPDX library, and uh, I believe Protocode uses some of it as well. So, um, so, and they're licensed in a way to encourage commercial adoption. One of the reasons I put time into this is I wanted to see SPDX adopted and I wanted to make it easy for tools vendors to do it. So here's a set of libraries. Now the only problem is you have to be using Java or have a Java bridge. So that is a little bit of inhibitor for some of the some of the tools, but maybe somebody will write some uh, Ruby uh, you know SPDX libraries that can be used for some of the other tools. Which would be kind of cool. The model is transportable, exactly. So you can definitely leverage some. Licenses. Oh, I almost forgot to mention this. Well, I've been talking a lot about the tools in terms of the uh, translators and displays and everything else. There's almost like a, a different set of libraries or a different aspect of the tools which is just related to the, the, the SPDX standard license list. Um, if you want to programmatically go find the SPDX standard license, you want to programmatically be able to understand what's in that license, what the text of the license is, what the title of the license is, what the URLs are. There's a set of libraries that are implemented into the SPDX tools that will allow you to do that. And it actually, it's actually pretty, um, uh, pretty sophisticated. It will go against the, the, um, the actual website that stores the licenses. When you go look at spdx.org slash licenses, you see a bunch of text. You see it rendered for you as a human. Um, behind that, there is an implementation in RDF that can be parsed. And these libraries are basically a programmatic interface to those parsed licenses. 
Now, there may be a situation. I mean, I, I do a lot of uh, audits where I'm not allowed to access the internet. It's a real pain, by the way, but some people are very sensitive about the security around their source code. Um, so I needed to have that offline. So in addition to that, the library has a copy of all those licenses locally so that, you know, if it, if it fails a connection to the internet, the, uh, the tools will still work. So that's all implemented in the, in the tools. It won't do. It won't do any kind of real-time caching. There is a resource directory that stores it all, so you can you can do that manually. But it's really the updates to the tool that that really you know download a new version of the tool when there's a new version. So the offline, you know, if you're using it offline, you do have to be careful that you're using the the most recent version, you know, of that. But the user can update that directly. You don't have to. It's nothing that's hard coded in Java. You just look, you know, just basically download the uh, the 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 uh, archive file of licenses and dump it into the uh, into the resources you know directory and you're there. And I mentioned the uh, license comparison functions that are necessary for the compare utility. Um, if you are interested in using the Java, there's really two starting points I'd point to. Um, the, there's a class called the SPDX document that's the top of the model for SPDX documents. That's where you can find SPDX packages, SPDX licenses, SPDX files, checksums, all those things that were in that other diagram um, are, can be created from this class. So go look at this and you'll find different ways to open or create. So basically if you point it to an existing URL on the web page for RDF or an existing file, it'll be able to open read it. Similarly for the license functionality there's an SPDX license info factory and uh, uh, what you can actually um, there's two different main interfaces to this uh, one is to you know just basically create licenses but you can also pass it uh, strings that are in the uh, the uh, standard SPDX format and it'll basically parse that string for you and uh, it'll be able to detect if it's an SPDX standard license, a non-standard license, keep track of the non-standard license IDs, all that stuff, and be able to hand you back the, uh, the right license. So that's for the programmers in the room. Uh, that's for the, the three quarters of the Java programmers. So, um, what's next? Uh, you know, I, actually, this isn't as important, I think, as it used to be. Personally, I'd love to have the tools online because I, I like to see them being used. And it's really hard to download a, uh, a jar file and you know type in all the command lines to be able to use it. But you know when I when I look at the work that uh, UNO has done, you know you really you guys have really done a nice job of, of making the SPDX functionality available on the web. So it may not be as important uh, uh, as it was before. Um, the HTML viewer would be really nice to enhance it, make that look a lot better. It's very flat. You have to scroll a lot to be able to look at it currently. Uh, I've been asked to provide a, a JSON uh, for, uh, uh, format for the uh, license website, you know, so that's on the list of things to do. There's some people that would like to use that as opposed to the RDF. I think it's a good idea. It's a very popular format to be used. Um, and then it's whatever you guys would like to see. So, and again, I, when we get to the last part of the discussion, make it much more interactive. And, uh, uh, I'd like to get you guys' ideas on what you'd like to see in the SP that would help you guys, whether you're a tool developer and you want something in the library, or you're a user, a consumer, or you're producing SPDX, what, what would help you guys out in terms of adoption? So I won't ask that now because I wanted to save that for the very end when we do the more interactive uh, discussions on that. Okay? So let's see, do I have one more slide on this one? Ah, this is important. Um, it's all open source. There's a Git repository that has the, uh, the tools. Um, contributions, suggestions are welcome. Uh, if you want to, do, if you want to, for example, maintain the tag value, I'll make you a, uh, I'll, I'll give you access so you can commit the files directly to Git. Uh, if you just have a few small improvements that you uh, you want to make, feel free to email me a patch file or, or just let me know the idea or the suggestion. Uh, we do have a, uh, a defect website that you can go to. Um, a bugzilla, and you can feel free to sign up and contribute to that directly. Did I mention we need a uh, maintainer for the SPDX tag? Uh, okay. So I feel like I got to change into a different person now. So this is a, a different presentation. 
Um, and again, I'm going to make this relatively brief because if I, if I spend too much time on this, I'll expose some of my biases. Uh, but this is, a, uh, uh, this is just a, a landscape of the tools. And, and I, I, I think this is something that came up in the business team. And I think, Scott, you mentioned this, is it would be nice at the, at, at the Linux uh, 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 collaboration summit to, to basically be able to uh, review all the tools that are out there that support SPDF. So, to support that, we sent out a survey about two months ago, uh, and we asked everybody in the SPDX organization to please tell us um, any tools you have, any tools you know of, any you know even remotely know of that support the SPDX, uh, whether they're open source or commercial. And uh, I just have a few slides here uh, that present the uh, the results of that survey. Um, this is the summary. So these are all the tools here. Um, if you're curious about the order, these are the order they submitted them. So the people that were really fast. It, uh, by the way, I, I got to say though that the uh, this was set up on the uh, UNO site, so all the possibilities just got there first. <laughs> but uh, uh, that's the order of them. Uh, the the license that they have, you'll see uh, in, in you know Pathology GPL, the SPDX tools or Apache. FreeBSD for the dashboard, as, as uh, Matt mentioned, and uh, these are all the different uh, commercial tools that are there. The other thing I, I, we asked in the survey is, are these tools intended for production or consumption of the, uh, of the SPDX? Most of them today are production with a, with a few of them that are consumed, but what I found interesting on the commercial side especially is a lot of the consumption is in development. Because you know, when you think about a, a tool that's primarily scanning, and uh, identifying the sources of it, you think, okay, they're going to be producing. But there, there seems to be an interest now on the commercial side of being able to import the results, whether it's to compare uh, against the, uh, the, the findings or, or, or just to be able to bring it into the workflow within the own tools. Those are, those are actually uh, planned in many cases as well. And then the last question we asked is, uh, is this something that you intend to be fully automated, turnkey, push the button and it's done? Or is this something that's more towards being uh, being used by an expert, where it's really uh, not you know intended to be a tool to assist in the analysis? So, um, like in, in my case, the source auditor tools, um, you know, you need training to be able to use it. It's really intended for somebody to do the manual process and be able to assist that. Uh, but there's other tools that are really more of a website tool, where you can go in and you can look at the information and it displays it in a format that's SPDX compatible. And those are those are much more fully automated. So I'll, you can look over the, uh, the results there. I, oh, I'm sorry, I should have removed that. That, that should be SPDX Warproof tool. I missed that one, and that's Wind Driven. Yes. And I actually have the detailed slides here. Um, and you know, we've already gone over the pathology tool, so yeah, I won't, won't go into more details here unless you ask me to pause or add anything. Um, dashboard. Uh, Antipedia reporter. I'll pause here because we haven't talked about uh, uh, this one. And uh, you can see some of the integration features that they have available. And just to give you an idea of the, the format, the same format of the slide for all of these. Just the description as as described by the survey respondents, and in some cases, like here, it didn't fit. Um, the full text of the, the, the replies are in a uh, an appendix to the uh, the slides that are on the website for the collab summit. So if you need a if you have trouble finding that, just let me know, and I'll I'll email you a copy of it. But do refer to that, you know, if you want to get some more information in terms of the uh, the description of the backgrounds and the tools. And of course, the most important is how do you find more information? So there's the, uh, the uh, URLs, uh, Black Dot, um, in terms of what they're doing, uh, the integration features. As I mentioned, they, they use the, uh, the libraries and uh, have contributed back to, uh, to the library creation as, as part of their integration with the, uh, with the SPDX. So I don't know if you guys want to add anything. And these two people right here can give you more information. Bill and Kirsten. SPDX workgroup. See, I got the uh, workgroup tool right on, on the slides. I already talked about that. Uh, the tools that my uh, my company produces. Oh, 
open logic exchange. And we do have a representative open logic back there if you want to gather any more information. You guys getting enough time to read these? Protocodes, another uh, contributor, by the way, to the uh, SPDX libraries, especially on the tag value side. Thank you. And SPDX Cloud, the Wind River, I believe. So we talked about some of the uh, features of that. that's it as far as the uh, 